I get asked all the time if it's necessary to have a bike fit on a mountain bike. And while it's certainly not uh, as prevalent as it is on road bikes and triathlon and time trial bikes, it still can be very useful for the mountain biker. A lot of the same biomechanics issues come up on the mountain bike. One of the areas where the mountain bike is easier is that we are generally on a steeper and more varied terrain and so our cadence is, is changing more often. Uh, we're out of the saddle more often and these things have a natural relieving f effect uh, as far as the repetitive stress on our body. But one of the things I run into with a lot of my mountain bikers is I get a lot of clients, we have a lot of people come in with their suspension set up very, very poorly. So today we're going to go through a real quick basic setup of suspension and especially how it relates to bike fit. This is by no means going to be a master class on the subject. There are suspensions out there that can be tuned extremely, extremely delicately and uh, to very fine details. And that's just way beyond the scope of what we're going to do here today. But what we will be able to do is hopefully get you, help you do some of the basics so you can get your suspension set up so that it's just not working against you, essentially. So take a look. Okay, so first we need to just do a real quick primer on what some of the features are. So many shocks are very similar to this where they allow you to do just a couple of things. Now this is a three position shock. It's not every shock is gonna have that uh, functionality to it. Sometimes they're just one or two positions. Sometimes it's just one. The main things we wanna focus on and that we can very easily do something about are two things. One is the rebound, which is this red knob here. And the second is the air pressure. So the air, most shocks are air shocks these days, and the air pressure just determines essentially how much resistance there is to this compressing, and it's dependent on your body weight and your riding style. So the heavier you are, the more pressure you're going to need in the shock, and the lighter you are, the less pressure. And this is where I find most people that are new to a full suspension bike, where they make their first big mistake is they run too much pressure in the shock. There's not necessarily one ideal setting. Here we have, there's a little O-ring on here and these will be on many shocks. If you don't have one, you can even just put a zip tie on there. And the easiest way to do this is to start with the manufacturer recommendation for weight, if they're gonna give you one, but to just experiment with it. And what I generally have people do is have the person get on the bike, clip into their pedals, and have them bounce up and down on the seat once or twice and then just sit. And then when they sit, we push the O-ring all the way up and then they carefully get off. And this will then, when they get off, this then uns unsprings, essentially, opens up. And we're left with how far down this is pushed by the, by the, uh, by the shock itself. And, you know, for, if, if you're, if you really have to run, you want, you want to ride a stiffer shock, it might be just about there, which is like a, a quarter to a fifth maybe of the full travel where, you know, if you wanted a little more plush, now we're between probably 30 and 50% of the travel of the, of the shock. But somewhere about a third, somewhere about there is where it should be when you're just sitting or just have your body weight on there. Okay, so we're gonna add some pressure to this shock because we don't we ha don't have enough in there. So I'm gonna take that cap off, and this is just like a looks like just like a Schrader valve on there. We're gonna take our shock pump and thread it on and just add a little bit of air to this setup. Yeah, and we need to add about 30 or 40 PSI. This one's really low. So that's the first thing, is making sure we get the air pressure close. The next thing we're going to look at is this rebound. So it's this red knob, and, and on a lot of bikes, even on the RockShox forks and things, uh, a lot of times it is a red, it is going to be a red anodized knob like that, but um, it should even say on there, sometimes they'll have a little uh, a plus or a minus like it does on here showing you know which direction is more rebound or less the positive means there's more rebound control essentially meaning it's going to this shock is going to once it's compressed it's going to return to its full height much slower when we have have it turn towards the negative side of this where we're rotating in the negative direction we're taking uh, the rebound out of the of the equation and it's going to basically act like more like a spring where it's going to compress and rebound very very quickly so I believe I have this open, so I have it turned towards the negative. On the RockShox, it's a little bit more intuitive because one direction it'll have a tortoise and another direction it'll have a, the, a rabbit or a hare. And so, you know, faster, slower. So this should be uh, towards the negative. This should be as fast as this shock gets. Let's see. Yeah, you can see when I push down, it just 
bounces right back up. Aside from too much pressure, this is the second area where people get into trouble, <clears throat> is they run their rebound way too fast. Because what this does, if this is acting this quickly, your body may still be maybe on its way down and the shock may actually be pushing back up against you or jamming the wheel down into the ground or making the wheel bounce even. Making sure this, this rebound is adequately slow is really important. Now, how slow is too slow? Again, it depends on what you're doing, how aggressively you're riding. There's a bit of personal preference for it, but I really feel like there's almost no reason to have a shock for anybody running this fast. So all these changes that we made on the rear shock and all the adjustments, um, we can do on, on this uh, front fork as well. Um, they have the same place where we can add air to the system, which is in this top left leg. And then the rebound is set on the bottom of this right leg. Um, there is another red anodized uh, knob here that I'll show you. So I have the bike flipped over here and here's the rebound adjuster. Here's that that red anodized knob that I was telling you about. There's a, what that's kind of I like that the RockShox does that it makes it easier. It tells you which direction is faster and which direction is slower. So as far as setting pressure I think the simplest thing to do, uh, actually, and it works reasonably well for most people, is trying it to adhere to the manufacturer's recommendations. There's, there'll be a decal on this where you can look up, based on how much you weigh, what shock pressure you should run in the fork. And it's a pretty reliable way to go about it. While following these recommendations is a reasonably good place to start, it's not the whole story. And there are even some uh, recommendations from the manufacturer printed on the fork stanchions themselves which will show you where you are with 10% sag or 20% or 30%. And basically you do this the same way we did the rear shock where you sit on the bike, adjust the O-ring, and you see where the O-ring is pushed to as you're sitting on the bike. The best way to go about this is to do some trial and error. What I would do is often start a bike ride and put the O-ring near the seals and then go for my normal ride. If I finish the ride, and I hadn't used, say, even half the travel, um, I would know that I need to remove air from the system so that I'm getting a little bit more of that travel. However, if I'm bottoming my fork out and the, and the uh, O-ring ends up all the way at the top of the travel uh, after even a moderate ride, then I know I need to add pressure to the system. In general, it's a good idea to try and get as much of the travel out of the fork during your normal riding as possible. If you have the travel, there's really no point in not using it.